kia rono tātou te whānau, uh, ngā mihi mā, māhana ki a koutou, ko waiau, ko Jeff Milner tōko ingo, uh, as Moko said, the Chief Executive of Ngāti Hene Health Trust. Just a little bit about the Taitokoro Whānau Order Collective. Uh, I think the collective is one of the best kept secrets in Taitokoro, and today is about launching that out on the next evolution of the Whānau Order journey. I just want to mihi to the Whānau Order Commissioning Agency for supporting this kaupapa, and the Taitokoro Whānau Order Collective uh, in, in Taitokoro is the expression of waka here in Taitokoro. So playing on the screen behind me are the 12 members of the Fana Order Collective, and many of them will be familiar to you and I across, uh, across the rohe. So we are um, present in just about every town and, and uh, region in Taitokoro. From the top uh, to Kao, we have Whakawhiti Order Pai. We, if we come down from Tehiku into Kaitaia, we have uh, Tehiku Hauora, Te Rārawa Angamua, and a new uh, partner that has just joined the Taitokoro Whānau Order Collective is Ngāti Kahu Social and Health Services. If we come over the Mangamoka a little bit, uh, out, out west we have Hokianga Health. Uh, we come into Kai, kai kohe, kohe we have Te Hauora Ngāpui and Ngāpui Iwi Social Services. Uh, and further out east we have Tarunango Whaingaroa, who are, who are resident in the Whānau Order Collective. If we come into Moirua, you would have heard from Ngaho Davis earlier on in the Kopapa, and so he iwi kotahi tato trust one of the partners. We head south, we've got Kia ora Ngāti Wai, uh, we've got um, Tahoa Fiofio on my left with Martin and Janine Kaipo, uh, and then we have Ngāti Hine Health Trust. So there are 12 partners in the Fana Order Collective of Taitokoro. Many of these entities should be familiar to, to you. Uh, and we're on an amazing journey about bringing the up of Fana Order and growing it in in Northland. But I'll come back to some of those, uh, some of that quarter or um, shortly. Kia ora, Janine, Martin. Kia ora, <laughs> kia ora, Fano. Um, I was just trying to think. Oh, which part could we step in from? Um, and I'm going to go front line. So frontline is for us when Fano Order came across. I mean, we all knew it was something that was ours, but when you're working in the industry of services, um, I think after 30 years, it was the frustration of when was it going to be our time to do what we knew was work for us, and we had the evidence for it because we all were we were all digging the trenches. So when Fano Order, the so-called business contracts came up. Um, straight away, it's just like Ngaho said, opportunity was there. We all knew that this was a vehicle that we could use to capitalise and actually start to have our voice, um, our whānau voice. And just as practitioners Māori, um, that we needed something to be heard. We were doing the mahi, but we weren't being heard. So um, the other thing that brought about was our whānau. We have so many whānau that have so much talent and when we would step up to support our own whānau, we were told, you're not qualified, you don't have that, who are you? But we already knew that we were the best fit for that whānau. So whānau order allowed us to give those bridges and to network with our whanaungas um, in the mutu to strengthen that voice. Um, and I suppose it's just, for me, it's whānau order is everything in this Māori space because prior to that we were working isolated, we were backed up, um, patch protection with my precious, my precious, because the contracting does that to you. And we were playing their game uh, and now we've actually started to restore, um, repair our relationships with each other and... Um, I'm really passionate about building a Māori workforce um, and if it encompasses non-Māori, that's cool, but this is our kaupapa, so if you come into it, this is what you're coming into and people said, oh, you know, isn't that a little bit kind of biased? I said, nope, we're really clear about that. Um, we're building our specialist team. One of the questions I do have, and I'm interested in some of the, the um, who's who in the zoo, so to speak, is that we don't know where a lot of those um, 
pipelines and pathways are for our whānau coming up who are asking us when I want to do business or if I want to start something, where do we start? Um, just today I picked up two links, two hookups. Um, I'd like to see that improve because we have so many whānau that come through our door with, oh, I have an idea, and because it's not our specialty, we're not sure where to where the pipeline is so that they can get real support and real information. And with our whānau, they don't want it in a year's time. They want to know now. So, um, you know, I'm putting that I'm putting that out there too. Um, we can be a pipeline to um, each other to share share that information and share that knowledge in order to grow whānau. So, kia ora. Kia ora, kia ora Janine. Um, uh, as Martin gets ready to add the kupu, one of the questions was, what is the aspiration for the Fano Order Collective? We have pretty much the hands and feet of iwi Māori inside the Fano Order Collective. We have journeyed over uh, five years to be as to how to work together. Uh, Fano Order brought providers who the system said to compete against each other around the same table to work together to build trust. Uh, we have about 35 people employed across Taitokoro within the Fana Order Collective, uh, Kopapa only. And our aspiration is to now, over the next little while, is reach out and work closely with our iwi, um, the, the, the trust boards, the Runanga, the iwi of the North, to create a commissioning entity for Northland, so that uh, the Crown, in discharging their treaty responsibilities to support a for Māori, by Māori, with Māori uh, approach, can fund one commissioning entity uh, in Northland, driven off the Fana Order Collective, and our, our own can design the services that Janine talked about uh, and, and not take services divine, designed and managed by mainstream. Uh, so this is a shout out to, to uh, the government ministries and departments as the transformation in Northland as we want a single commissioning entity to reflect what the Fana Order Commissioning Agency is doing nationally. Kia ora. Thank you, Jeff. Great, great speech. Kia ora tātou. Uh, ko Martin Kaipo tōku ingoa. Um, ko nga te kuri te hapu, te apauri te iwi. Um, I'm going to take uh, the whānau order concept into an economic development um, perspective. When we talk about um, economic development from a social, it's based on social responsibility. We talk about uh, social wellness and health and economic development. It all comes along the same base. How do we do that? We do that through good, solid relationships. And in terms of uh, our relationships with ministries and supporting our whānau grow into small business, then we've got to look at uh, who the roles and responsibilities of that process. In our relationship with... Uh, we have been... Um, given the opportunity or gifted with the privilege of redesigning Otangere, an entire village from a final order perspective. So what we do is that nothing comes into Otangere unless we have that decision making. That's where Māori are trying to go in terms of that. But you've got to have good relationships. At the same time, the responsibility for us is to make sure we deliver quality service. All our whānau deserve it. My cordial around that, if our whānau don't get the quality service, then we shouldn't be doing it. Simple as that. So in that relationship with um, the economic development, also about uh, how do we um, get investment, because one of the things that we struggle with, with whānau and from hapuri to hapuri, is that finding solid funding, if we're not relying on the government, where do we go? what happens in that process. Again, there, there still has to be further conversation with iwi. You know, there's talk about iwi having so much funds, but is that being reinvested in our whanau? This is the question that has to be asked. Um, so there, there's a whole lot of discussion, and it, and it can and does happen from a collective response to it to the challenges that we all face. So these are some of the discussions that we, um, some of us push the fold in, and we've got to push the fold. Otherwise, our whānau are going to continue to become a statistic. 
So this is where, uh, in terms of the final order collective, has allowed us to do, is allowed us to mobilise and have those conversations on behalf of full whanau. But at the same time, it puts a responsibility on us to deliver quality, address the social deprivation of our whanau today. So we're in a, a good space. Um, in Otangere, we have now expended our, our areas from social to employment to health, uh, having our own services. Our focus in, in our community is to become totally sustainable where we create our own employment, we've now built our, uh, our design of, of papakainga so that councils can look and say, what's the rationale behind it? You know, they, they talk about it takes that village to raise a child. What we're saying, it takes whānau to nurture that whānau. So that's the whole concept between uh, our, our thinking around the whānau order space. And, and again, there's been some challenging um, for us. There's also been some good journeys and experiences, and the experiences are, in that space, has been the learning from our whānau. We have got also got to have the ears to listen to the voices that have been told in stories. Kia ora, Jeff. Thank you, Martin. And uh, so I'm looking at the uh, Māori economies empowering whānau, the opportunities within the Taitokoro Fana Order Collective is that between the partners, uh, there is there is significant business in the north. I don't know, 80 to 100 million dollars worth of business per annum, and we would welcome an opportunity to engage in a procurement strategy with Maori entrepreneurs to ensure the maximum amount of funding that uh, predominantly we get from the crown is able to support emerging businesses. Uh, we don't have that as an active strategy currently, but I think that's an opportunity for uh, those in business and aspiring business owners moving forward. Uh, and my final comment before handing back to Moko would be, we're also on a journey to deconstruct the current Crown system, to deconstruct it and to learn the lessons of COVID, which was very much about empowering partners like ourselves to get amazing results. We don't want to go back through heading towards Christmas and New Year and suddenly wake up and say actually mainstream is the same as it was in January uh, uh, next year as it was prior to COVID. Uh, there are lessons to be learned and one of those lessons is for the Crown to uh, empower Māori to come up with solutions and then stand aside and allow us to deliver for our whānau. Kia ora. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.